Hello friends and welcome again. Um, in this video I want to do a um, closer look at some of the special features improvements that I made in my uh, Type 26, 46 and uh, Type 50 amp that I've got here in front of you. So um, I want to highlight a couple of things that I think um, contributed really well to the um, sound quality of this amp. And um, so let's let's start with uh, with a couple of things. First of all, um, output transformer and mix of transformers. So what I've chosen here is um, here we've got a Landau, here we've got an amorphous core as, inter as a high current interstage, and then we've got a uh, completely over designed a 30 watt um, Z10 core um, AI AI. Um, um, transformer and I think this combination works really nicely um, I, I would have liked to also use a similar um, um, for the first stage uh, with the EL33 that was the initial plan but that wasn't to be so um, and to me I found that uh, having the iron core instead of a amorphous core at the SDN stage um, can really I, I feel that it can be deal better with uh, current and, and, and creating some weight in the bass where with an uh, amorphous core you need to really over um, seriously over design it for it to do the low frequencies well and um, but having it as an interstage or earlier where the signals are smaller and um, because I'm also working with open secondaries so um, every stage drives the other stage with open secondary. There's no um, grid resistor. Um, so the secondaries are open, which means there's a very high load placed on the on the preceding tube, which makes the, the load line really flat. And um, and I think that that suits these um, these type of cores a lot better. I still want to do experiment with a permaloy core, permaloy, um, core as well, but the amorphous core I think works really well in that position with open secondaries where there's not much current, but there's um, really the accuracy and the voltage swing and the detail. Um, and then um, this provides a lot more weight. So that's feature number one. Feature number two is the DC filament supply. So I'm using three methods, uh, two methods. So two of the, the 46 and the 50 um, use a regulator, a regulated power supply, but they both um, still have a small um, common mode choke and then an, a final filter cap. So in this case, a Elna um, purple rope, and here is a, a Nichicon Muse. Um, that is the final capacitive filter stage, uh, even after um, what should be a quite clean supply. However, that's not all of it. If what I've done as well is um, use sort of a balanced way of, of um, powering the filament, which means each filament, the cathode resistor, is always um, a, split, a, a split load. So there's the same um, um, sort of matched uh, resistors on each one. So that means here as well that there's two 15 ohm resistors, two 15 ohm resistors. And that means if there is any um, any signal or, or noise in it, it will actually appear evenly over the two um, over the both sides of the filament, uh, and hopefully um, cancelling out most of the noise. So that's the same as sort of a center pot. Um, so even though this should be very clean, if there is anything or noise or um, anything left from um, well, whether it's rectification noise or uh, regulator noise that is left after the common mode choke and, and, and uh, final capacitor, it still will be distributed over the two pins of the um, of the filament, the directly heated filament. And so I, I think it's just an extra little step to make sure that um, the DC can be as, as quiet as possible. And what I feel it has done for my amp, um, both the DC filament supply plus this setup, is that instead, I think it reduces intermodulation distortion a lot. Um, but in, in effect, I felt that I went from a wall of sound to something that is completely natural, has a natural depth and natural resolution. So you can see very far into the music, but it, it seems to be a natural, um, very analog to our own hearing, where how we can hear things in, in the distance, the, the proportions just seem right. 
there's nothing obscured in a way that that you some which I feel you get with a lot of amplifiers, a lot of systems, where um, when the music gets complex, it seems that you can't look into the music and you know it's reproduced. It's just it it is not it's not offering a natural clarity and depth in the in the music that allows you to sort of hone in like like you can in, in a, maybe in a busy room you can hone in into a conversation and pick up that conversation the same you can do with music but uh, i feel with ac filaments that that becomes more of a wall of sound and you don't have that natural depth and clarity and re re resol resolving uh, um, aspect in the sound so now the other one is very short um return paths i've spoken over that before um single copper wire uh, running very short so the ac loop is extremely short it's just um, um maybe you know four inches or so three inches or so the return loop um kept in incredibly cop high quality wire uh, cop copper wire not silver yet um so that's one aspect now third fourth aspect then fourth aspect is isolating the power supply as much as possible of each of the three stages now three stages of course things double up so it, it seems also uh, also getting more complex uh, Hugo Bloomers made a comment on that whether I went for complexity and I'll address that in my next comment um, but I wanted to separate the power supply as much as possible and again that leads just like the DC filaments leads to a lot more ingredients uh, that I need to put into the amp. It's not necessarily more complex, Hugo, but it 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 sort of sprawls out the amp because you're addressing each individual element and you're not taking shortcuts. You're not sharing things. So I didn't want to share the the power supply. So if you look at my power supply, I've got a um, two times four hundred um, output transformer. It's not that great quality. Um, and then I've got a, a rectifying tube, the 5R4, and then I've got a first capacitor, and then it actually goes to the first high current. This is a 400 uh, milliamps 4 Henry choke. And then it goes to the first cap. After that first um, CLC, but this is a very small value, just to tweak the voltage, um, it actually gets split. So the the output stage for the type 50 which draws a lot of current and has a lot of current variation gets its own arm here it has its own choke it's a 40 henry choke and then the two other stages which have open secondaries and have a near constant power draw because it's only the voltage fluctuating the power the the load line if you if you will is extremely flat um, very high load because of the open secondaries it has its own arm so I calculated this and even in the worst 20 hertz tone at full volume um, it only produces a minor ripple on 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 this and uh, through the just the, the sheer capacity that's being used but also the, the the early separation now i could have powered it separately um, but i just didn't have two of the i wasn't sure that the I wanted to use the 5R4GY rectifier tube at high voltage to do the rectification and not do, use another tube to um, really separate this out um, because I wanted to use the, 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 the tonal qualities, the, 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 the sonic qualities of this rectifier. And so, and, and also it would have gotten, um, yes, if, you know, even more filament supplies as needed. So I had to make some compromise, but I think this separation in these three stages so um, this one then goes to the final cap here and then it, it gets dropped by a, a resistor network for 250 volts for the or about a little bit more but um, for the type 46 and the type 26 runs on 160 volts um, so it, there's another so after the initial CLC LC you get an RC network which is the final stages for these so as you can see, huge filtering, um, nearly no ripple on the B plus really. Um, the, the highest ripple is on the Type 50, which only has a uh, just a you know a double pi filter, so a CLC LC. Um, so that is another element: uh, separation of the different uh, stages. Don't hook them up together. Try to separate them as far as can. But I, I made a little bit of a compromise just because of the rectifier. 
So that was the final ingredient of that. Um, ah, now one thing to point out with the which, which I forgot to actually tell you with the filament supply is that the Type 26 actually has a passive filament supply where these are the the higher the and the thinking behind that is you need to use the highest quality um, in your first stage because that gets magnified out uh, by the other tubes. So I wanted to, to place most of the emphasis here. Now one part of logic that we haven't talked about here is the shunt resistor. So there's only two uh, resistors in the signal path at any one time. It's a 24 step switch. Um, not, it's not in series all these resistors. They're just only two engaged at any one time. So that actually gives a very high quality sound, minimal interference. And this is the fixed uh, bias supply. So I'm using a fixed bias for the 40, for the 46 and uh, the type 50. And the type 26 has a cathode, uh, a, a normal bypass cathode bias. Um, the idea also being is to just to use some different ways of um, biasing it um, and, and so that you don't have a, um, a, a singular type of sound uh, appearing in the amp. However, I would say some people make the remark that fixed bias can, be, can sound very sterile, but um, I must say I, I find my amp sound anything but sterile. So um, um, yeah, actually, in fact, um, I until now I often used to work with a hybrid rectification. So one tube and then uh, as part of the other side of the bridge, I used two Scotty rectifiers. And I must say the removal of the last Scotty rectifiers in, in, in the, and using a full wave rectification, uh, I removed a bit of that, that graininess. And um, I see when, you, when you're using silicon, uh, silicon in your circuits, it removed the last bit of that sound. So um, I'm really happy with this uh, full wave rectification uh, setup. Um, I think that that was really one of the other uh, elements in this amp that um, contributed to the sound that it's actually given. Anyway, that's it for now. I do want to address that sim that uh, simplification of the, uh, what is it? Um, Hugo's comment about um, complexity of the amp, and as I already sort of alluded to it, um, yes. It seems like it has got more com complex and it has a lot more components and the component quality can further be increased and the, and the wiring quality could be increased. However, for a three stage design, because I didn't want to use high, um, high gain tubes and, and my EL33A didn't work. So, but it was still would have been a three stage design. Yes, that is a little bit complex. And especially as you start separating everything out, you get a lot of ingredients on, uh, apparently on your amp, but it's not complexity really. It, it is very straightforward. It's just each stage is optimized by itself. And really that's actually, if you go back to the concept of this amp, um, where it originated, one of the things was because in my last amp, where it was also the type 26 was the first stage, I noticed that the DC filaments and then introducing a common mode choke, and these are very small common mode chokes, but they, they work very well. They're flat copper wire. Um, and that Im improved the sound so much that I really liked that direction. So I wanted to uh, again really go all out on the DC filament supply. The other one was that the Type 50 tube, um, I found just harking back to, you know, I never could get the 4P1L tube to sound really good. Um, there's always this disturbance, even though you can reduce it a lot, and which I managed to do in the last amp design. But I wanted to use the Type 50 because that was the only tube that um, really didn't have any colorations or things that I could really hear compared to any of the other tubes that I used. And of course, I got the chance to actually put a 46 in, which I think adds a lot of, I wouldn't say color, because I can't really speak about coloration, but it, it, it seems like it has a very beautiful tone. So the whole setup now, uh, I think, has a very good synergy, this 26 with the 46 with the 50. So then one thing, having established in my concept that I wanted to use the Type 50 tube, I just worked back from how, and, and also knowing that 26 is, is for the moment my favorite input tube. 
I just had to find something that would drive the 50 really well. And I, and, and I know that a lot of things that Sakuma has tried, maybe not in his execution, but definitely the, the real findings that he found in his amp designs usually turn out to be true when I try them. And so I really wanted to do a, a, a run this at the, at the recommended point um, with an interstage transformer and, and don't skimp on anything with that. Power tube drives power tube. And I'm using a very good input tube to drive the, 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 the smaller in, the output tube. So stepping that up in, in, a, in a fashion that seemed correct. Uh, so the, the plate resistance as well, it sort of drops over the tube. So this is so probably is around 7000 here. Um, this is about 2400. And then we've got the type 50, which is probably 17, 1800 ohms plate resistance. So it steps up really nicely. Um, and that was the concept. So work back. How can I make the 50 function optimally? How do I not have influenced the, the stage before it? And so on and so on. So you just sort of step step back through that concept. That That is the idea. And then, of course, one of the tips, probably element number seven in the improvement with the sound is the Janos from Real World Audio. And by the way, thank you, Janos, for... Um, all the brilliant advice and by the way guys if you're not subscribed to a channel you this channel you should really do so um, link in the description um, he recommended me to to use these kmet um, capacitors so you've got 135 uf banks here and 180 uf here and they're a little bit bypassed by a small cap as well but they are fantastic in not having the typical capacitor sound that you hear of most amps. So that also enormously reduced the, um, and these are by the way other DC links, they're not as good as the KMATs, but they'll do for the first stages. Um, so they have very low inductance and very low internal resistance. We were talking very, very low. So they, they almost start acting as a battery, um, even though of course, as they discharge, the voltage will drop and the current delivery will drop slightly. But um, for these two stages with open secondaries, there's nothing going on. And for this one, yes, it's there at worst, but it, it, for most of the music, this will act almost like the perfect battery. And, and you hear that in the sound, it's, it actually sounds very, um, you know, despite these being uh, um, very similar to MKPs, um, so uh, metallized um, poly polypropylene um, caps, these are actually very, very non-cap sounding. So I'm very happy with that. And that, that is definitely one of the major elements that um, lifts this amp up. So there you go. Uh, about probably eight things that, that went into this design and the choices. Um, so I hope that is a little bit useful to you. Maybe some ideas for your own amps or choosing amps. Um, but those are sort of, that's a bit the summary of what went into this amp and what made the difference. So thank you for tuning into my channel. Um, and um, yeah, that's it for now. Um, I hope to catch you in the next video. Bye bye for now. Bye bye.